Hello, today I'm looking at the Infiray P2 Pro thermal imaging sensor. So this is the camera or sensor. Um, it's a USB type C for Android phones. Uh, it's very tiny. I'll just put an AA uh, cell there so that you can see the size of it. It is really quite small. Um, and also in the box is this um, macro lens. So I'll just take off the lens cover and that simply sticks on with a magnet. So it's pretty quick to put on. So this is a 256 by 192 high resolution thermal imaging sensor. Um, it's also 25 frames per second, although it doesn't do that absolutely continuously because periodically it um, self calibrates. So you do see little jumps in the continuous movement. The macro lens uh, does get you very close. Um, I'm guessing about two inches or something like that. Um, but occasionally that's useful if you want to look at some small electronic components. Okay, let's get um, some electronics, which is gonna give off some heat and take a look at the images um, through the app, which I'll run on my Samsung phone. And you can also record video, which is gonna be really handy for this video. Okay, here's the app uh, P2 Pro. You can get that from the Google uh, Play Store. Now I can either run that app, or I think I can just plug in the thermal imaging camera into the USB-C port and it will detect it and run the app for me. Right, here's the app uh, running on my phone and I'm looking at this um, buck boost power supply and we can already see that there is uh, or there are some hot spots this one over on the left um, even without the macro lens I think you can see that that is an eight pin chip but let's put the macro lens on and uh, get in a little bit closer so the macro lens just snaps on like that and now I can get in really close and you can see all the detail um, the legs of the chip are fairly reflective, so they're showing up, uh, well, basically what is being reflected in them. But the body of the chip, you can see there, is quite warm. And the temperature there is uh, uh, 40 degrees in the centre of that IC. Now that's a small buck regulator IC, and it's the main power supply for all the electronics, including the microcontroller on this unit. Uh, lying down on the board looks like a possibly a two pin that's possibly uh, oh the tab may be being used as the third connection can't remember what that device is let's have a look on the board okay I've switched to my uh, video camera on my phone and no I think the device we were looking at was actually that heat sink there so let's go back into the thermal imaging uh, camera software and switch to video mode um, no, actually there's the heatsink with the uh, standing up TO220 device on it. There's actually a device lying down in there and it is what I thought it was. It's a TO252 or something like that. I'll just switch back to the normal camera so that we can uh, see that. Yes, the device we were looking at is actually down in this gap between that heatsink and the... And it is a, a TO252, I think, or something like that. Uh, down in that gap <laughs> yes I couldn't see that at first because it's sort of tucked under this um, display board well now that was with this uh, buck boost converter switched off so let's switch it on and see how the temperature profile on various components has changed actually let's just check the current which is 200 milliamps well actually not much it seems it's the same suspects which are warm i'll just snap on the macro lens and we'll take a closer look again again that eight pin chip at about 40 degrees another eight pin chip there 38 degrees the to252 oh that's quite warm that's 43 degrees and i think there was something over here oh that could be a resistor let's have a look uh, yes, it is a resistor. It's a 3300, so it's a 3K3. And I've got a feeling that's across the capacitors, so it's just uh, discharging those output capacitors.
Well, now here's another um, heating appliance. This is actually an infrared heating panel. It's 180 watts and it's really quite intriguing. So I'll just switch into the thermal imaging camera. And uh, you can see that there really isn't anything to see, perhaps apart from, apart from my own reflection. But let me switch that on and things will look very different. Right, I've just turned on the power. Oh, you can see my foot there. But um, can you see that pattern emerging? Now, the um, resolution of this sensor is such that you can actually see I don't know whether you'll be able to see my hand here, yeah. Um, the wiring inside this panel, yes, I can feel the heat coming off it, but you can see the connection point and a cable inside the panel, and you can see all these sort of heating cells, um, which you're just completely unaware of um, if you look at using a normal camera. So yeah, back to my normal video camera, and of course there's absolutely nothing to see, apart from again, a few reflections possibly. So let's go back to the thermal imaging camera and I will turn that heating panel off and something quite interesting happens. So there again is the uh, pattern of the heating cells and it's interesting because there are parts of this which are so hot you can't touch them um, but there are other parts up in these corners um, which are not as warm and oh you can touch them and in fact you can use your finger to suck the heat out of that panel right let me switch that off which i can do here um off and watch what happens as um the thing is not directly being heated by uh, this is mains powered it's 220 volt electricity you can see there that as the heat starts to dissipate as it starts to spread, the image appears to go out of focus. It's not out of focus, it's perfectly in focus. But the heat is spreading from what were the hot um, heating centres to the cooler areas. And yeah, you just lose the definition of that heating pattern. I'll switch it back on again. So that's it switched back on. And fairly quickly, you see the detail of those heating cells comes back in, well, I say into focus, it's really not much to do with focus. Um, it's to do with the concentration of heat in the heating elements. And so that's what's inside. You can't see that with the naked eye, but that's in, what's inside one of those uh, infrared heating panels. What's the highest temperature? About 75 degrees. And uh, now I've come outside into the garden, and uh, yes, the patio looks uh, pretty uh, kaleidoscopic, doesn't it? And uh, I'm out here with these two solar panels, and I noticed something yesterday on the thermal imaging camera which was a little bit concerning. I'll just switch into the infrared app. Ah, uh, yes, of course, I remember now. I disconnected. Um, the two connections around the back of the panel because it was causing a really strange effect. I'll reconnect them now. Yes, you can see I've disconnected. There's one of the MC4s and the other one's over there. So I'll connect those back together again. So I've reconnected the two MC4 connectors on the back of that panel. It does seem to have set the dog off, I don't quite know why. So let's switch back into the thermal imaging software. And what I noticed was that there were some cells which seemed to be quite a bit hotter than adjacent cells. So, for example, there's one cell here which is much warmer. Well, in fact, there's one down there which is quite a bit warmer. Let's actually feel that. And yeah, you can actually feel that that cell is warmer than adjacent cells. So what's going on here? I've got a funny feeling that the terminal voltage of course has to be zero because I've shorted out the MC4s but are some cells generating voltage and other cells perhaps going inverse voltage but um, yeah it's only really with a thermal imaging camera like this that you can see that strange effect and here's a really interesting effect on the thermal imaging camera well you can see my reflection but you can also see the cell bottom right is much warmer but only in its top left hand corner let's go back to the normal camera and you'll see why 
and the reason is that that cell is half shaded so the bottom right of that cell is probably cold and it is but the top left is warm and in fact it's a lot warmer than adjacent cells i'll go back into the thermal imaging camera yes that's really interesting isn't it so by partly shading that cell it's doing far less work than all the other cells and as a result I think it's been driven by the other cells so it's getting hotter yeah that's really interesting and it shows the effect of partial shading on a solar panel so that shows a few other things uh, you can do with this infrared high resolution 256 by 192 pixels thermal imaging camera with 24 or 25 uh, frames per second video. You can shoot actual thermal imaging videos um, of interesting things that get warm. Okay, so um, details in the description below, including uh, lots of Amazon links where you can purchase this item. Uh, also a $20 coupon code. You can get $20 off this device using my special coupon code. And a big thanks to Infrared for sending me this device for review. Cheerio.